back to another week of what's for dinner. If you are looking for some dinner inspiration, some ideas that maybe you can plug into your menu this week, you've come to the right place. Stay tuned. Hello everybody. Tonight we are having kebab. So I'm going to show you what I have in this bowl here. I chopped all of this earlier in the day. So I have some, and this is very um, probably unusual to go on a kebab, some asparagus. Um, but I'm gonna thread them on there. I'm gonna probably do about three at a time. We'll see. And then I've got a whole package of Eckridge cheddar smoked sausage. Let's see, on down in here, what do we have? We have zucchini, squash, cherry tomatoes, lots of onion and I think that does it so all of these things here to make kebabs in addition to this I have these are four t-bone steaks that I took off the bone and seasoned this morning these have been marinating in the refrigerator one boneless skinless chicken breast same thing this has got some olive oil, some dry seasoning, and some honey mustard, and this has been marinating in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna start threading my skewers because we're having kebabs tonight. Well, here are all of the beautiful skewers. Are these not so, so pretty? And it's so hard to estimate on these things how much you're gonna need, how much you're gonna make. This made a bunch. So I had four T-bone steaks, a package of smoked sausage, one chicken breast, and then I ended up using for my veggies, green pepper, onion, tomato, squash, zucchini, asparagus, and I think that's it. And there's some honey mustard, there's some olive oil, there's some cavenders, um, garlic involved on seasoning. And I got so busy making these and you know your hands are just all consumed with all the picking up of all the raw meat and I did not even put my camera on. So here we go. These are going to go on the grill. They're going to be delicious. And there's so many because you guessed it, it's family night plus we have an extra or two. So we will have plenty for everybody to enjoy this yummy meat and veggie kebabs. I'm going to try a new recipe. It's called a stick of rice. Uh, <laughs> it's called a stick of butter rice. I have a similar recipe pinned on my Pinterest and I've had that for such a long time. It's not called a stick of butter rice, but it's basically the same concept. And I just ran across this one when I was looking at baked rice and realized it's the same thing that I had on my Pinterest. So I'm going for it. Here we go. While I'm talking, I could be showing you this. A cup of white rice, uncooked, into, it says an eight by eight. I'm gonna use my round Pamper Chef Rock Crock. To that white rice, you're gonna add a can of French onion soup. So I'm gonna pour that in. There's only four ingredients to this. I have never baked rice. I love my rice cooker. Oh, I love this soup so much. It's just so flavorful, anything that you use it in. And it also calls for one and a fourth cups of beef broth. And I'll show you here what I'm using. I'm using this Orrington Farms broth base. And so you use two, and it tells you right on the top, two teaspoons to one cup of water. All right, now the rice, the onion soup, the beef broth. Now I'm gonna add in the butter component and it's um, a stick of butter. I did read some reviews that say you could use less, but I'm gonna follow the recipe, which I often don't. I'm gonna go ahead and follow the recipe and put in the whole stick of butter. Some say you can just plop it in, put everything else in there, it'll melt. Some say cut it up into pieces. Mine's pretty soft, so I'm probably just gonna, you know, kind of put little pieces here and there. Now I keep my butter in my butter crock here, so this is 
a little less than half a stick. Oh yeah, this is soft. Um, oh, this is gonna be messy. It's all right. Now let's go for another half a stick. That was a little less, it's okay. I'm just gonna see if I can get this off here. Not too bad. And so those of you, um, how about you leave a comment below, do you leave your butter sitting out on the counter for room temperature? I do, have for years, wouldn't do it any other way. All right, here we go, it says stir. I did um, spray my pan with cooking spray my little baking dish here. Oh my goodness, the smell is intensely wonderful. Okay, that's good enough for me. You bake for 30 minutes with the lid on and 30 minutes with the lid off. So I'm gonna get this in the oven. Oven. This is the halfway mark, so I thought I would just show you what it looks like. Got the lid off. It didn't say to stir it, but I'm just going to stir it. And then it goes back in for another half an hour. So, it's looking delicious and smells really good. Okay, I just sampled this, and it's been in the oven for 35 minutes covered. And it's done. It does not need to cook any longer. The rice is completely tender. I'm just going to put the lid on and let it sit here on the stove until it's time to eat. So definitely, in this case, with the jasmine rice, did not need an hour cook time. All right, James is home from work and he's got these kebabs on the smoker, on the grill. Don't they look so, so good? I had this four pack of shrimp skewers also. Definitely wasn't enough for everybody to have a whole one, but we threw those on there as well. And he's putting on some extra olive oil and seasonings. And the gang is almost all here for family night and dinner. <laughs> What do you want to say to courage? <laughs> That's what you want to say too. <laughs> Who is that? It's Curse Go! You need strawberries! <laughs> oh, oh, with your suntan feet. Pops up by. Mmm, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, now it's gonna be fun to be. <laughs> you get a bite. Let me just say this meal was a complete winner with everybody here. Our kids just went on and on about these kebabs and these half-baked potatoes you saw me make those that's one of my favorite way ways to make potatoes and you can put out toppings for those this rice was unbelievable everybody said this is the best rice i made a salad and put out some of our favorite toppings and we just feasted and i'm going to show you here in just a second the dessert we had i'm going to show you a picture of it and then here it is 
I want you to stay tuned to the end. This is with blueberries off of our own blueberry bush. So stay tuned. The very end of this video, I'm going to show you the recipe. Look at this. I have some fresh garden green beans. This is from our son Gunner and his wife Abigail. This is from their garden. And she brought a, like I think a half bushel basket last night to the brim to family night that we um, pitched in and helped string and break. I didn't, but uh, several of the other family members did. And um, it's just so fun working on green beans and things from the garden. Um, brings back memories always uh, from when I was a kid, helping with my parents um, in their garden. And we haven't had a garden for maybe two years now, I guess, um, just because we're too busy, honestly, but we uh, hope to have one maybe next year. It's a lot of work in a garden, but anyway, she left me some green beans and I'm going to get these broken up and cook these for dinner. Love, love, love fresh garden green beans. Okay, they were broken, strung, washed, thoroughly washed, rinsed, washed, and now they're cooking. And I like my green beans from the garden cooked and cooked and cooked some more. That's just how I like them. Um, so it's got some onion in here, some garlic. We've got some, um, I didn't have any fresh bacon thawed out, so some bacon pieces, some real bacon pieces, some salt, some pepper. And I'm just going to cook these low and slow all day. And then for another side to go with our dinner, I have not made fried potatoes in so, so long. I cannot tell you the last time. And so I've got some bacon grease here in the pan. My potatoes are all cut up and they're gonna go in and I'm gonna add in some onion and we're gonna have fried potatoes as a side along with these fresh green beans. And these Yukon Gold potatoes are just unbeatable. I love them so, so much. And instead of making a whole pan of cornbread, I just decided to fry up some little cornbread fritters or whatever they're called, fried cornbread, hoe cakes. Um, so I'm just putting some self-rising cornmeal in my bowl here, just eyeballing it. It was probably about two cups, I'd say. I'm going to add in an egg and I'm going to add in a little milk and just until I get it to the consistency that I want it to be. You want it to be kind of like a pancake batter. Now normally I add uh, self-rising flour as well, but on a um, hoe cake or a corn muffin, something like that, I really like a heavy cornmeal taste and consistency um, and texture. I love Cracker Barrel's little corn muffins, cornbread muffins. And so I had that in mind and thought, okay, let's leave out the self-rising flour and just do the cornmeal. And it definitely did have more of that flavor. So it was really good. We really enjoyed these. They fry up so, so quick. And this way you can kind of um, choose to make an amount more appropriate for what you need, say two people like us, rather than a whole pan of cornbread. After my potatoes have fried for a little bit and I've tossed them around a bit, I always add in a little bit of water and then I don't touch them for a little while and just let them steam. It helps to get them soft and tender. For my meat portion of tonight's dinner, I'm using this Eckridge Cheddar Smoked Sausage. And I've got those all cut up here into individual links. And I'm using my stovetop griddle and it covers two burners. So on the front part, of course, I'm doing the sausages. The back half here, I'm gonna get my 
little fried cornbread going. I'm just using a little bacon grease back there to fry these up in. And here is the dinner all plated up and I just think this is a plate of country goodness right here uh, these garden green beans there's just nothing like them they have a taste all their own got a slice of onion to go with that and the little cornbread fritter there and the fried potatoes and smoked sausage is such a quick dinner if you keep that in your refrigerator you can have a meat on a table in no time flat this meal was delicious. Moving into another night's dinner, I asked James what he wanted and he said, I want some pan fried burgers. So that's what I've got going on here in the pan. And let me tell you what took these burgers over the top. That was these Kaiser rolls. I got these at Aldi. I knew I was making these burgers. So I got the Kaiser rolls, a yellow tomato. Of course I had all the other toppings. And I just knew that these casseroles would be so good and they were better than I even thought. Some pickles. If you're wondering why tartar sauce, it's because it's um, a topping on a burger from a restaurant where my husband grew up. They put tartar sauce on their, um, it's kind of like a Big Mac style burger. Don't knock it till you try it. It's basically just mayonnaise and pickle. But here is a look at one of the cheeseburgers. Oh my goodness, like I said, these Kaiser rolls were so good and then I just made my patties bigger so they would fill out the whole Kaiser roll because they are bigger than normal size rolls and so oh my goodness it was such an easy and quick supper we just served it with um, homemade uh, French onion dip and chips there's not much better you've heard me say it before than a pan fried burger and one night we went out to dinner because this was so delicious and it always is I thought I would show you a clip this is James plate it is chicken livers macaroni and cheese and fried potatoes and mine is it's like a big huge pork tenderloin that fills the whole plate with gravy fried potatoes and macaroni and cheese so delicious and then James loves their raisin pie so he likes to get that when we go this place is called Gray's Cafeteria and it is in Mooresville Indiana it's not super far from us so every now and then we like to drive to Gray's and have a delicious dinner Welcome to the sweetest part of the video for sure. This cake uses a cake mix and I'm using a yellow one. And the blueberries that you saw are fresh picked right off of our blueberry bush. We got a couple of quarts um, and that doesn't count all the ones that we ate while we were picking and that we snacked on once we got inside. And so not long ago, I don't know, a few months back, I got to thinking about um, upside down cakes and I knew our blueberries were looking pretty good and would be having a nice blueberry harvest. And I looked up a blueberry upside down cake and sure enough, there is one. So that's what I'm making right here. So it's basically the same concept if you've made, ever made a pineapple upside down cake. So you melt your butter. I have my flame on my stove here on low. And I'm just melting the butter, adding in the brown sugar, and then the blueberries. And I had probably a fourth a cup of crushed pineapple in my refrigerator from something else, I don't even know, something James had done with it. 
and I thought, okay, I'm going to throw this in too. So that was just my addition to the recipe because I had it and I knew it would not hurt anything. You mix the box cake mix according to the direction and you pour it right on top and put this thing in the oven. That is a pine pineapple. <laughs> I'm so used to pineapple upside down cakes. It's a blueberry upside down cake. You guys, this thing was unbelievable. Um, this was on family night, I told you. Look at that layer of blueberries in the bottom. How simple is this recipe? Our whole family, the, the boys, the girls, our sons, their wives, everyone said this cake was to die for and it was just so, so easy. So here's always the fun part with the upside down cake. You have to turn it over. So I always use this big platter and um, so I pulled it out this time and look, it came out perfectly. There was just a few little blueberries and a little bit of brown sugar on the bottom. You'll see here when I take it off, that was nothing that I couldn't repair. So look at that. So I just took my little spatula. You see the berries are continuing to fall out anyway. And I just took my little spatula, put everything back in place. And my goodness gracious, was this absolutely amazing. The best part, it was made with the blueberries off of our own blueberry bush. If you aren't following me on Instagram, I'm pretty much an Instagram newbie. I'm still learning over there, but um, I showed a couple different times of us picking blueberries off of our blueberry bush. Look at this deliciousness. Several comments were made about how moist this cake was, and I fully agree with that. The berries were so sweet already, but then with the brown sugar and the butter, it just gives such a great, great taste. And we served it up with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Well, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, consider hitting that red subscribe button. Come back every time I'm in the kitchen. You can be here with me. Just hit the notification bell and give it a big thumbs up if you like what's for dinners. All right, guys, see you next time. Good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Mm -hmm.